All right, you know, I was just in the waiting room there, and I was only in there for like five seconds, and and Dan and Lucia already wangled their way to having hoodies and t-shirts of our new logo on it. So I think that's probably that's the first bit of feedback I've heard. So thank you for that. We we have a swag store. It's exciting stuff. So welcome to the stage, Lucy and Dan. It's great. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for for sharing. You know, I know you guys are always busy. We know what it's like today. So for you to give us some of your time, it's, it's great to. Great, to, great for you to do that. Thank you so much. Do you want to start by maybe introducing yourself? Lucy, ladies first. Sure. So I'm Lucy, Regional Director at Datadog for UKI South Africa. Um, ahead of joining Datadog, I have been at MongoDB, BMC, Couchbase and Quest Software. So you'll see a trend there of all medic organisations. Um, and there is a reason for that that I will go into as we go through this. But really excited to be here, and um, I, get a, I get a hoodie, so delighted. <laughs> I will, I will. Personal win. I will just say that um, Lucy, you may recognize Lucy, she was on our Masters of Medic podcast. And um, then uh, I think the title was 21 times a President's Club winner. So I just thought, well, that's, you know, that's pretty impressive. I don't know how, you know, you must have been like, you know, must have started selling at the age of like six or seven or something like that, because you don't look old enough, Lucy. But um, the point here was you actually, when I took that line and put it into the agenda, you were like, actually, and it's now 23, because it's been a couple of years since we last had that. So somehow you just managed to keep on winning these consecutive President's Clubs. Awesome stuff. So Dan, Introduce yourself, please. Perfect. Thanks, Andy, and thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. So I, uh, like Lucy, I'm um, one of the regional directors for the UK. Actually, no, hold on. Sorry, I apologize. As of last Thursday, my job changed, so I'm actually now the area director for Iberia, Middle East, and Israel for Datadog. Um, prior to Datadog, um, I was at uh, Mongo, and before that, I was at Acquia. Again, also medic shops. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been selling tech for... For way too long, 20 years. I had hair back then at some point. Uh, I still have some black and white pictures that that, that show that. But um, no, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Good stuff. Right. Let's get stuck into it then. If you can um, bring up the deck. Like I said, I've been uh, delegated chief clicker here. You guys must have some pretty strong security not allowing you to share your screen at Datadog. That's probably a good thing. All right. <laughs> let's go. So let's take it away, guys. Perfect. So Today we're going to be really going through um, a few bits and pieces, but it's it's really around why are we going to you know why do organizations why do people like us uh, and sellers join companies that are medic focused? Um, so Lucy, uh, as Andy articulated, has been you know has been in the industry for for quite a while, and she's worked at as she as she mentioned places like Quest, Couchbase, PMC, Mongo, Datadog, um, and uh, I guess the first question is Lucy after. 18 years in, in this space, why do you continue to work and, and join medic organizations? Fab, sure. So, um, yeah, I, th I think there's probably one or two reasons why I do this. Um, so, first of all, all the medic orgs I've worked for have had elite sales teams and leaders. And I think as a personal level, this has made me better. But I also feel really fortunate that I've been able to learn from so many of the legends of the industry. Um, I know you're going to name drop some of them later, um, Dan. But um, I also love anyone that knows me. I love process and data. And Medic allows me to embrace both of these whilst using a framework, which I know creates success on many levels. Like selling is not just about the deal. It's about the customer um, experience, um, which I think some of the champions um, on the earlier sessions were talking around. Um, and it's making sure that they have a great engagement from start to finish. And Medic allows um, them and me to do that. Also, I've heard. Um, so to, to have that um, great end to end experience. And, and I guess thirdly, it's um, being in an environment that allows you to thrive. Um, one thing that I've noticed from all the medic orgs I've worked for in the past is they have a very um, high regard for development um, of individuals um, in all areas of their roles um, and personally as well. And being able to um, prove to be the best you can be with lots of learning. So um, that's another reason why I think a medic org is a really great place to be, because not only does it allow you to um, learn, but with that comes the earning potential as well. So um, they're probably the three things that really kind of drew me to medical organizations from a, a young age. Um, but I'd love to hear, Dan, what your view is on it as well, because you've worked for a number of them also. Yeah, so it, it's slightly different for me, right? Because I wasn't born in medic like, like, like Lucy was. So I've actually seen a world with medic and a world without medic. And what I can say is I can, first of all, wholeheart wholeheartedly agree with the three points that, that Lucy mentioned, right? It's a it's it's a different world when you're working with the with the framework and and, and the process that that medic enables you to to repeat and scale as, as you progress through an organization. So 
all I'll say is I agree with you and I'll give a shameless plug to the, to the people who actually got me involved in this. Uh, one was Steve Williamson and then the folks at Mongo. So people like Don Darcy, Dan Barrett, James Kirk, a huge thank you to them because, you know, they're because of them is how I ended up at Datadog and why I have the opportunity that I have now. So yeah, shameless plug. Thank you to all of you. Good stuff. So, so Dan, um, you've hired and built teams for many years really successfully. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do is ask Dan to really walk through what he looks for when he's hiring new talent into his teams, um, both now and, and in the past. So, um, Dan, are you able to walk through just kind of what you tend to look for as you um, go through candidates within process? Um, and feel free, anyone, to pop some questions in the chat as we go through this, if, if you'd like. Yeah, sure. By the way, we don't know how the build is going to go, so excuse what I say and if the if the slides don't match a little bit, but the I'll just the make it all go. There you go. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Andy. So, look, I look for three things, right? They're I, you know the S's, K's, and Q's. Uh, I'll walk you through each of them individually, um, but I'll give you some context as well. So, the S's, K's, and Q's are simply skills, knowledge, and quality. So, what I mean by skills is this, right? Not every company is the same. Not every challenge is the same. So there are specific criteria that I look for when I am building a team, especially in my role at Datadog, because we're still, although we're a very established company, we still have a small total addressable market. So I know that I'm looking for hunters. I'm looking for people who are, who are creative, who are um, find creative ways to PG, who aren't afraid to pick up the phone, like true hunters who are willing to get into the weeds, to get muddy, to get dirty, you know, pick, you know put on a helmet, pick up a gun and do the actual PG. So I know that one of the key skills and one of the key components that I'm looking for is someone's ability to build pipeline, hunt for net new logos, right? So that is a huge skill that I know that I look for. I also know that we work in a very technical space. So I'll go into that in the knowledge for a second. So it's about, do you have the experience and do you have the skills to, hunt, to be able to identify, you know, using an account map or a PRP, what are the, objectives of a company, what is the uh, strategy that underpins those objectives, the initiatives that underpin that strategy, and then the initiatives that potentially have challenges that Datadog, in our example, can help with. And then how do you then operationalize that and turn that into live pipeline over the course of X, X amount of time? The thing is, everybody knows that Datadog is a, is, a, is a medic company. Everybody knows that there's a bunch of medic companies. So people always tell us everything we want to hear, and everyone is a hunter, and everyone is yada, yada, yada. The truth is the people who do this best are the people who show me. I had an interview with a, with a gentleman about three weeks ago. And when we were going through this, he turned around and said, Dan, let me just show you. Let me just show you how I do this. And it was awesome because it shows me that, A, he actually does it in real life. And he's shown me the success of it. So with all of these things, don't just tell us, show us. It is significantly more uh, impactful if you do. The second piece is the K, the knowledge. And this is the expertise. A lot of uh, the medic companies are technical cells. So it is important that you know if, you know, if I say AWS, if I say microservices, if I say uh, hybrid cloud, that you know what these terms mean. So in any organization that you're joining, you should know or have a base understanding of the domain expertise. In our case, it's the microservices API des DevSecOps world, but you have to know what they are. You have to know what they mean. You have to know how to engage and who the personas are that care about the thing that you're selling. These two components, the S's and the Q's, are important because it, it's, it, from our point of view, it's the time to ramp, right? We as, as leaders, our job is effectively to teach, right? To teach and coach. The thing that you guys care about is your career, your earnings. So we have to try and figure out how to develop you as fast as possible in the fastest time as possible. If the ramp is too big, your, your introduction into a company is going to be very challenging. So we have to weigh up the risk of that versus the amount of knowledge and the ramp. And the last piece is the Q for me. The Q is the quality. When I talk about quality, I'm talking about the quality of the human is the way that I always is the way that I always say it. But it's, you know, is the individual coachable? Is he willing to learn? What is the thing that drives the individual? The reality is I can teach you the skills. I can teach you about the domain. I can't teach you to get out of bed. I can't teach you to work harder today than you did yesterday. I can't teach you to ask more questions, to be more curious. Those are things that you have to be, you know, you have to have ingrained in you. You have to understand your why. And for me, when, when you meet me, sometimes people think my interviews are super weird because I talk about nothing around the first two. It's always about the third point because it's the one thing I can't coach. So I spend a lot of time looking through those things. 
Perfect. There, there are some questions and we'll cover them at the end, but I think, um, Paul, you probably could have written our content because the next slide is all about your question. So, um, and that's around how we use Medic in the I hiring have to, process. I have to jump in there, Lucy, and ask Dan, did, did the gentleman you mentioned that showed you, did, did, they, did they progress? Have they got an offer? What's going on? <laughs> uh, so it's in it's in flight right now, but okay, I, uh, I'll say no more. Good. So <laughs> before, before the next slide, right? Um, it, it and Lucy will go into this very eloquently, but just put it this way: I am a huge champion of this individual. I believe he knows who he is. Um, I am, you know, openly vocalizing and selling on his behalf um, because I think he will be a great addition to to well to the to my old team and and, and to the. Uh, to the Datadog region in the UK. But look, before I get into that, I think let me introduce this next slide because it's quite interesting. So the reality is Medic is a framework. It's a prospect, is a process that we use for prospects and customers. However, it is something that can be used across all facets of, um, of an organization, right? It's super repeatable. It's easy to, uh, to implement. And it's the common language that we have at Datadog to the extent that it also forms part of our recruitment. So as we're qualifying through recruitment, the medic framework comes into play. So I wanted uh, Lucy to take the SKs and Qs and break them down into what they actually look like from a, from, a, from a medic standpoint. So Lucy, if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. So as Dan alluded, we, um, we do use um, medic in our hiring process. Um, you know, it's very well having medic on your CV, but if you can actually apply it unconsciously with it throughout the interview process, like your skills are gonna shine through and we're gonna know that you are a true medic. Um, rather than um, just someone who's got it on there because it, it looks good. So what I'm going to do is, Andy, you might just actually, we'll build the slide as we go because we've not practiced this, but um, we'll start with them. So when we um, talk about metrics, um, we're talking about knowing your numbers. So in the early stage interviews, we care about how well you know your data points and how you can talk intelligently to like support these. We care about how you achieved your quota, what the build of that was and um, how you, or what percent you're over. Um, or under. And if you've got a reason why you're under, it could be economy, it could be the product wasn't great, it could be a bad product fit for a requirement. But, you know, be really honest and open with those numbers. We really care about new, new logo lands because with every um, sales or like landing new business is, is the most important. Um, the expands are there, but landing new customers um, is, is super key. And also be prepared to give a number of examples on those. So when Dan and I interview, we ask for a number, but then we go down into it and ask about, you know, who was the customer? What was the pain they sold? What are the three whys? Um, we also love club attainment. Who doesn't? Um, and we also love to find out how you rank yourself against your current team and your peers. Um, that for us shows a little bit around um, emotional intelligence um, and also if you, can, if you can back that up. So early stages, probably in process one or two, we care about numbers, so make sure you know them and make sure that they can stand up. The only, the only thing I'd add to that as well is, um, like I said, right, don't just tell us, show us. And one of, the, one of the easiest ways to show us, and this, again, this is region specific, you can't ask for this, but, you know, I've had um, examples in the past where I've done this myself. I did this in my previous company where people have just shown me their P60s, right? If you're saying you're a top performer, your earnings will prove that. So if you feel comfortable and you want to, ex to excuse the language, shut us up, why you be 60 at us? We have no problem with that. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. Wow. So the next one is E. So who's who in the process? You should treat this like a deal. Um, so obviously there's a number of people that can say yes, but there'll also be people that can say no, and they're not necessarily the hiring manager. It could be someone, you know, two levels up. It could be someone in tech. It could be someone across the whole org that could actually say no. Um, so you want to make sure that you have um, understood what's previously stopped people being hired in the past. Great question early on. But also um, make sure that within the process you've made um, or got an understanding of like who's who, what makes them tick and what they look for. And if you ask um, throughout the process, you will get answers but make sure you've mapped it. So treat it like a deal and, and map out a power map or a champion plan. And then you can use that um, to try and build those relationships to make sure that you nail, um, nail the process. Decision criteria. Um, every leader will have a number of criteria that they have, um, and there'll be some non-negotiables in there, um, as Dan mentioned earlier in his um, SKQs. And what you wanna do is get and understand these early um, and make sure that you can showcase them with, with data like show births and tell, um, and make sure you understand those. And if there's some of the non-negotiables that you don't have, make sure that you can like 
um, back it up and kind of persuade and, and talk about why you are still fit for that role, even though you may not have all of the um, kind of criteria that we're looking for. The next one is process. So what does the process look like end to end and who is involved? That links back around to the kind of who can say yes and who can say no. But what you want to understand is, again, power map, what are they like? Ask if there's other people you can speak to within the org um, in the process to get that insight. Um, we love curiosity and we love to get, um, or we love to see those pe people using the tools and the ecosystem around them because it, then it shows what they're going to be like on a day to day and how wide they use um, people around them to, to get success. Um, one of my team, um, we now involve them in the interview process because um, obviously the team, we want to make sure that we're, we're a tight team and um, they love being part of that because we're, we're testing emotional and IQ, but also how well they're going to fit into the current team. If we go to I, so everyone would say this is decision criteria, but um, Dan and I had a big debate about this and we don't believe it is. So I didn't identify decision criteria early and why the hiring is happening from the leader. Is it hyper growth? Is it because everyone's left due to a bad culture fit or another reason? So ensure it matches your own criteria for a new role because there's nothing worse than starting a role in the first week. Um, you've gone through the big process, you know, maybe four or five stages, you've accepted a new role, you turn up on day one and it's not what you signed up for. And I'm sure we've all been there. But make sure you ask lots of questions throughout and ensure that um, what the company is offering in, within the role, within the culture, within everything um, is what you're looking for um, in all aspects. Um, and don't be afraid to ask because that day one mistake, you don't want to have it. The next one is champion, something that we all love. And we say no, no champion, no deal. It probably is the same within the hiring process also. So we want to make sure that we identify, build, test and use throughout the whole process. The hiring manager is going to be the one that you really want to get close to, but there's going to be lots of people around the process that actually you want to make champions as well. So in the Datadog process, for example, we have a, a tech interview to sort of showcase Datadog and show um, kind of what the values are and, and how the customers get value from it. So that to see how well a candidate will be able to articulate that, you want to make those tech champions um, or those tech SCs your champion because then they're behind the scenes saying, this person did a great job. They understood the tech well. It's not all just about the hiring manager. So cast your net wide, a bit like we spoke about within the um, the process and the EV side, cast your net wide and make sure that you are um, trying to get the support of as many people as possible within the process and use your initiative and intelligence to go and reach out to other people. Maybe it's LinkedIn to go and find out what it's really like to work at the organization from day one. And then the last piece is um, competitors. So we care about who we're up against, because if you're interviewing and you're, a, you're an A player, you're probably going to be interviewing at more than one organization. But what we care about, or what you should care about, is how many people are going for the role? How many positions are there? And again, how do you rank against those people? You should ask that every single step of the stage, because as you go through a process, and it could be maybe a 10-day, two-week process, um, there's going to be new people coming into that process if we've got more than one or two roles. So you want to make sure that you're constantly checking in every um, interview process to make sure that you're still shining star number one um, so that you get the role should you be successful. Dan, anything to add to those? Yeah, um, so not, not to add, it's just also, I want people to think about it like this as well, right? Like this is a two-way thing. The interview process is not just you know, the hiring manager interviewing the candidate, it's, it's both ways. So make sure that as the, um, uh, as the person being interviewed, that you have your, the things that are most important to you, the things that you're looking for, the things that, that you want out of, out of your next job, the next company, your career, your progression, it is important that it is a two way street. It is, you know, I always make sure that when I kick off an interview, that's my first thing is, hey, this is a two-way thing. I want to know what you care about, what's important to you, and the things that you feel will help you get to where you want to go. Um, so, yeah, just make sure you have questions that help you find out that for yourself as an interviewee. Guys, I love this. I think this is so apt what you're talking about here and how you're kind of bringing in so much of the particularly like the the emotional side of things like i think like 
as a hiring manager in the past where if I've been put on the spot and started to ask that, you know, those questions about, you know, my criteria, but also when you kind of combine the criteria of what I'm hiring for with kind of the pain I'm trying to solve for, like you said, like, is it because my best performers left? Is it because the uh, a person's had to leave because they weren't performing? And and therefore, what, what things were they not doing that I'm looking for this new person to do? And it's not just about finding those things, is it? It's about evoking that emotion in me that reminds me of just like how painful it was when I didn't have those things. So that person can kind of sh do the candidate can show that they have those things so i value them even more i think it's brilliant i really like this so sorry i just felt like i wanted to say that no no, no it's, it's a it's so, a really good point no it is absolutely so nearing the end now but um dan and i put together some do's and don'ts and some top tips on what to do and what not to do when you're interviewing um for any role this doesn't have to be medic specific but for any role so dan i'm going to let you um walk through this because you're super passionate about it yeah, no. So it's um, it's a few things, right? So we wanted to give you give everyone something tangible back, right? So it wasn't just like, oh, hey, here's theoretically how everything works, right? Here's some tangible pieces that that we wanted to give back. So first and foremost, make sure you do research on the um, on the actual role you're going for, the company and the person, right? This is a must, right? What defines a great salesperson, a great anything, is the preparation you put into it. If you were just showing up and throwing up. Good luck. You know, next thing, don't turn up without setting an agenda. The amount of times that I've, you know, I've joined an interview and I, will, and I won't set an agenda, right? My expectation is that someone is trying to set up an agenda with me, that they're trying to understand what are the things that I'm looking for, try and qualify me. Like the way that you position yourself in front of a, of a potential interviewer is the way that you're going to position yourself in front of a client right? The only difference is the sell that you're doing right now is yourself. So if you're not going to do it in the interview process, I guarantee you, you're not doing it always when you are moving through an actual deal with a client. So always make sure you set up an agenda. Own the interview and ensure that you understand the decision criterion of that, of that hiring manager and why that decision criteria is important. I've articulated already that for me, it's, you know, the total addressable market has to be penetrated. So it's around hunting that new logo, but make sure that you're asking the questions to qualify and understand the why behind that specific criteria is important because it'll allow you to then provide the answers that are um, aligned to those. Don't, don't lie. This one's, this one's honestly, like, like all of us are laughing, but this happens a lot. The amount of times I've had people uh, and I'll just use the word round up, um, you know, certain <laughs> answers, inflate, confabulate, use whatever word you, that you want. The reality is before I actually interview anyone, I've done a ton of research on you already. I've looked at your LinkedIn. If I can, I would have referenced you already. So if you are a, I don't know, director of something, I tr trust me, I will know if you actually are or if you're a team leader, if you're not, because chances are I would have done my research. So don't lie because... It's very easy. It's such a small world. We all know each other. Like tech is tiny. So we will all ask questions and you will be found out and that's not comfortable for anyone. <laughs> know your metrics, facts and figures. For my sins, I have a master's in statistics. I like numbers. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't have opinions. So I am very numbers based. So make sure that you know, like simple things like, you know, Lucy already said about like number of new logos, but also like, what is your quota? How did you achieve? You can't just say, oh, 100% or 120% or 150%. I'll go, okay, yeah, but what exactly was your number? How was it made up? How many logos? How many deals? Walk me through that. And sometimes I'll even ask you for your leading indicators, NBMs, discos, conversion rates, people who are consciously competent know those things about themselves because they know how to tweak the levers that make them more efficient. So make sure you know them. Uh, following the don't lie thing as well, that's kind of, I'm sure a lot of people feel like I do right now, but thinking back to those interviews being caught out on where you maybe haven't done as good a job as you have preparing. Whew, that's like, uh, that's bringing it all back to me. <laughs> uh, and then the last thing is this one, right? Uh, and you could have had the most unbelievable interviews. You've been curious. You've asked all the right questions. You've, you know, given us back our USPs. You know, it, you've built great rapport, blah, 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 blah gets to the end of the session and it's like, cool, thank you. Um, I'll await feedback. That is just burst the bubble. Oh man, it breaks my heart. So 
don't forget to ask for feedback. I always, 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 always ask like, hey, I don't want to know what's good. I want to know what's bad. Tell me what I could have improved on. Like, what are the red flags? How can I help? And then try and set the next steps. All of these components will help you understand the things that you need to work on to make sure that you secure that next step, whatever it may be. Brilliant stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I was going to ask Lucy if she had anything to add to those. Um, no. no. Perfect. So, look, we wanted to just give you, um, a, you know, a bunch of companies that that, that we know are uh, follow follow the process, follow the the, the framework that that are all great, are all growing. Um, so, yeah, with that, um, I will hand over to Andy and open up for any questions if there are any. Thank you very, very much. Lucy, Dan, that was awesome. Thank you so much. It's like one of these things I've, I've seen my notebook over there and I'm like, I need to write this down because I need to remember this sort of thing. So thank you guys so much. You can, I can absolutely guarantee you're going to get hoodies and the t-shirts you asked for for that. So thank you so much for giving up your time. And I, I can't see the chat box and I'm sure it's alive with gratitude. And if, you, if you're in there and if you enjoyed that session, be sure to show some love to Dan and Lucy there. And of course, like now there's a blueprint. You sh your interview should get infinitely better now because there's a blueprint for what to do if they someone wants to work in your team.